Well, glory to God. Praise the Lord. It's amazing how people will lend their ears to evil thoughts. That's what we're going to be dealing with in this message. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for your help, Lord. Lord, we know that without your help, we can't do anything. We know we need your assistance or your support. We need your enablement. Lord, without you, we're no different, Lord, than the world. We pray, God, that you'll help us, Lord, to share the things that you have given to us to share today. We know, Lord, that many times the things we have to share takes boldness. We pray, Lord, for that boldness. Sometimes, Lord, you use us to rebuke to correct your people. We pray, Lord, that you will season our words with grace and help us, Lord, to share the things that you've laid on our heart. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Some of you probably already have clicked off don't want to hear, don't have ears to hear. So many in this hour don't have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Don't have ears to hear the truth. Turn their ears away from the truth. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. The Scripture says that they will turn their ears away from the truth, not... Not just the falling away of going to church, but they turn their ears away from hearing the truth. We'll be right back after this. Welcome to Honest News. Praise the Lord. Well, if you'd like to follow in the reading of God's Word, we're going to be in Matthew, the book of Matthew, in chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20, beginning with verse 1. Jesus says, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers, for a penny a day. He sent them into his vineyard, and he went out about the third hour, and he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give it you. And they went their way. Again, he he went out about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and he found others standing idle. And he saith unto them, Why stand ye 
here all the day idle. They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall you receive. So when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed, did you hear that? They supposed that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, listen, they murmured against the good man of the house. This is what they said. These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day. So while they are out there working in the hot heat of the day, those that were idle all the day, standing out there doing nothing, were given the same wage as they were. Are you listening? Listen. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto this last even as unto thee. Listen now. I want you to hear these words. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? That's what I want to deal with. I want to deal with the evil eye today. But deeper than that, I want to deal with evil thoughts. Are you listening? They didn't have any problem until they saw that those that had come at the end of the day got the same thing they got. Anybody listening? That's the evil eye. Looking over to see what others got. Make sure everybody got the same. And you're not thinking about what you agreed with those that hired you. He that hired you, you made an agreement. You agreed to it. Why would that change anything? Because you see others that are treated the same as you. And they didn't do what you did. You see, folks, how the evil eye works? You see how the evil eye is covetous? How it compares? How how it causes us to compare ourselves with others around us? Paul the Apostle said they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise. But see, God's people do it all the time. This is where jealousy comes from. This is where envy comes from. This is where greed comes from. Amen. Do you remember your fondest dreams as a child? Do you remember those times when someone got something you didn't get? 
You all got something, but it seemed that so-and-so got something better than you. Right? And something down in deep inside you was not very happy. Hello. That's the evil eye, people. See, we're born with that nature. We're born with that fallen nature. How many know Lucifer did that to the Lord? Oh, yeah. He's the first one with the evil eye. Are you listening? He wanted what God had. He said, I'm going to take your throne. I'm going to take your place. (laughs) He became the devil. Are you listening? Jesus said he beheld as he was cast to the cast down out of heaven. Are you listening? He hasn't fully, totally, completely been cast down yet, but he is falling. And those that follow him will fall with him. Are you listening? And you, even after you've been saved, can fall with him. Fall from grace. If you get your eyes off of Christ. If you get your eyes on the devil. If you get your eyes on what the devil wants you to get your eyes on. Amen. He, the devil comes and puts evil thoughts in our minds. And he gets us to think on those thoughts doesn't he? Anytime you find yourself curious or wondering about uh, something that you have no knowledge of or no facts about, um, anytime you find yourself being presumptuous or suspicious, that's the evil eye, people. Did you know that if you don't have the facts, you have nothing? And yet, we live in a country that bases fact upon suspicion. All they got is suspicion. Are you listening? In this country, they can actually take something from you through forfeiture out of suspicion. Don't have to have any facts. Don't have to have any proof. All they got to do is have reason of suspicion. That's it. Or probable cause or something that's not even fact. And that's the country we live in. But you see, God's people oftentimes make judgments without the facts, without truth. Are you listening? Most of what God's people spend their time with, sadly, oftentimes, It's not even factual. Amen. Not even factual. James chapter 2 and verse 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring, in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing. You see where the word gay has been perverted today? That word gay in the Greek means good. Are you listening? Very expensive, lavish. And that's the word that today they have perverted for their perverted lifestyle, if you want to call it lifestyle. Him that weareth a gay clothing and say unto him, sit thou here in a good place and say to the poor, stand thou there or sit here under my stool. Are you not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? Have you ever 
been on the road and you see someone with a handout or someone that's asking for money or asking for something, and all of a sudden you start thinking in your mind. The wheels begin turning. I wonder if they're even real. I wonder if they're just, I wonder if uh, they could go out and work. They could get a job. Why are they standing out there? Well, first of all, you and I don't know their circumstance. We don't know their situation. Are you listening? It's one thing not to help them. It's one, one thing not to give to help them. It's another thing to have evil thoughts about them that you don't even know. Now, I know God is dealing with his people in this area of the evil eye. Are you listening? The Lord made it very clear that those with an evil eye are those that are full of darkness. Hello. Did you know that you can open yourself up to darkness through an evil eye? If your eye is single, the Bible says, your whole body's full of light. But if their eye is evil, he says you're in darkness. And he also said, how great is that darkness if you actually think that you're not wrong? Hello, people. How often do we, as God's people, judge ourselves as not being wrong? And if we are wrong, nobody can convince us we're wrong. Folks, I want you to understand that when you're wrong and you can't admit you're wrong, that is great darkness. Hello? That is great darkness. When nobody can help you, when nobody can convince you that you're wrong, that is great darkness. Are you listening? No matter how wrong you are, you'll never admit that you're wrong. Now, let me ask you a question. While I was just saying that, were you thinking of somebody else? How many know that's the evil eye. Amen. How come you're not examining yourself? Why are you thinking about somebody else as we're sharing these things with you? Did you know the word of God is discerning your heart right now? Did you know that? Did you know the word of God is a discerner? It's discerning your heart. Oh, yeah. The Lord is searching your heart with the truth. So as Brother Joseph is sharing these things with you, and we're talking about different things, if you would take a moment to think about what you're thinking about, where do your thoughts go? How often, while Brother Joseph is ministering, how often are you examining yourself? and not somebody else. How many know that we're in the time of great scrutiny, and it's not the devil? I'm talking about Jesus. He said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Are you listening, people? The word rebuke means to find fault, to scrutinize. How many of you enjoy being scrutinized? Do you like it? Do you enjoy? Well, let's look at it this way. Do you enjoy being roasted? The world does. The world likes it. In fact, the greater the roast, the better. The greater the laughs. But this is no laughing matter. The Lord is scrutinizing. Are you listening? Because he wants you and I to come clean. You know, a criminal. They got to come clean. Are you listening? If you're a lawbreaker, you got to come clean. If you're guilty, amen, you got to come clean. We can go on in denial, 
or we can admit the truth. If we will confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we confess our sins. Look at the condition again of the Laodicean church. We're rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. I want to say it again. If you're a judge of evil thoughts, you're in darkness. Amen. The scripture says that love or charity believeth all things. There is no room for suspicion. Now, I'm dealing with some very dark things today. Very dark indeed. There is no suspicion in the light. How many know when you're in the light, it is what it is? Hello? To what, today the world is just settling. It is what it is. The pandemic, all the injustice and everything that's going on today, it is what it is. Well, you can accept it if you want to. But I want the truth. Amen? And I know in order to have the truth, I've got to go to God for that. If I really want to understand the truth, I've got to go to God. Amen. You don't have to be in darkness in this hour. You don't have to be a slave in this hour. Amen. You don't have to be driven by the devil in this hour. You don't have to be a victim in this hour. You choose to be. Amen. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. I'm not going to be one of those, by God's grace, saying it is what it is. I'm just going to accept it. Not when I read in my Bible, in the book of Revelation, the great men of the earth, the merchants, how they use sorcery to deceive the nations. I don't have to look very far to understand that the word pharmakia, pharmacy, big pharma, whatever you want to call them, that that is the Greek word for witchcraft. Hello? Now listen, I said I was going to get bold, brothers and sisters. If you're partaking in what the pharmacy has, you're partaking in witchcraft. Rebellion. Oh, dear God. You shouldn't have said that, Brother Joseph. You're going to lose support. I ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. I watched my own eyes. After 9-11, I watched David Wilkerson's ministry go downhill. I watched as he and his wife both were killed in a car accident because he quenched the Holy Spirit. That's right. He quenched the Holy Spirit. God told him to rebuke those that were putting their trust in the stock market after 9-11. And he stopped right in the middle of the message, and he wouldn't. Deal with it. Because he has a lot of rich people sitting out there. And that big, lavish, fancy building that support his ministry. That's one of the greatest tests in this hour is a minister being willing to tell the truth. Or is he going to be too afraid to because that's his support? I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, listen, 
I'm going to tell you exactly what God tells me to tell you. In fact, as Peter said, we don't speak our own words. We're, we're speaking as the oracles of God, the sayings of God. Paul the Apostle said, I didn't come to you with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost, that your faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. If you've got a problem with something that Brother Joseph has said, you need to go find out if God is saying it. And if God is saying it, you need to take that up with God, not Brother Joseph. Years ago, I heard my pastor saying to his congregation, I'm just the mailman. He said, when the mailman comes and he brings the bills and he brings things that you don't want, do you get upset with the mailman? He said, I'm just the mailman. I'm just the messenger. Hello. Praise the Lord. You don't even get upset with the postal service. Right? You get upset with those that are sending you whatever you don't want. And think about that. You get upset with those sending you bills, but you didn't have any problem creating those bills or making those bills. And that's something. How come they keep on asking me for money? Well, somewhere along the way, you earned it. Right? They offered you something in return for that bill. It's time to pay up. Praise the Lord. How many know payday's coming, brothers and sisters, and the Lord God in heaven is going to give out his rewards? Oh, yeah. Reward day is coming. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Praise the Lord. The Lord is going to give reward or wage to everyone, to what their works according to their works. Remember what we were just reading to you about the penny? Praise the Lord. Think about it. If a man has been serving God for 30, 40 years and he gets to the end of this life and he receives the same thing as someone that just got saved, are you listening? Is he going to be upset with God because someone that just got saved is going to heaven too? Hello. Listen, people. We're going to have to get to the place and get beyond this place, really, of looking around, wondering about everybody else. We see in the scripture where Peter, after the Lord graciously forgave him. What's this man going to do? Jesus said that. What's that to you? He said, you follow me. What's this man going to do? Why are we always looking around? Wonder what brother Joseph's doing with that money. I wonder what Brother Joseph's doing. Hey, man, don't tell me those evil thoughts don't come your way. Don't tell me those fiery darts don't come your way. I know how the devil works. Hello. And then what do you do? Stop sending support. Because you've been entertaining evil thoughts. Don't tell me. Don't tell me it doesn't happen, people. It happens all the time. I told you about what my pastor said. They were going to start a building project and extend or add an addition onto the building. The people asked him after they did a fundraiser, what do you ever do with that money, Brother Reynolds? Or they were probably gossiping amongst themselves. Wonder what he ever did with that money. They got back to him. So during the service, he said, you that are wondering what happened with that building fund, he says, I never got it. I imagine those folks must have been pretty speechless. Amen. It's going to be a lot of speechless folks in the end. That's what the scripture says when they stand before the judge. Hello. Praise the Lord. 
We need to be honest people. Honest. Praise the Lord. To serve God out of an honest heart. Honesty. Purity. Praise God. Now, think about it. Up to this point in the message, have you been guilty of entertaining evil thoughts? Amen. I, I was amazed while I was putting this message again. I was amazed. How many times that I've been tested since putting this message together, since I just started putting these scriptures together? How the Holy Ghost would bring to my remembrance the scriptures that I'm reading to you right now. Amen. Throughout the day, different ones. Maybe they pulled out in front of you and on the road. Whatever. We oftentimes open our hearts, even our hearts, not just our minds, but even our hearts, and become judges of evil thoughts. Listen to what verse 4 says. Are ye not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? See, God is without partiality. God doesn't show partiality. And the scripture says wisdom from above does not show partiality. Amen. God is no respecter of persons, people. Jesus said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Amen. Amen. We're to be like our Father. We're to be perfect. We're not to show partiality. We're not to be judges of evil thoughts and show partiality. We're not supposed to be treating one person this way and another person that way. Hello. The Lord reigns on the just and the unjust alike. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've got to overcome this area, people, and stop allowing darkness to come in. Amen? Because what happens, you get puffed up. Before you know it, you'll be self-righteous, thinking you're better than the world around you, in the sense that you can do or say whatever you want to say. I'm telling you, I've been in the presence of some charismatics and they really think that everything's owed to them it's it's amazing to me amen i mean i remember one time we were working at the tent setting up the tent for the tent services and this charismatic couple came by where they were on their way by i should say going by where we were setting up the tent and their tire deflated i guess something happened and they're sitting on the side of the road. The guy got out of the car and he was going to fix the tire or whatever. And he saw my pastor's son standing there or nearby. And he asked him if he'd help him. Are you listening? And so my pastor's son actually changed the, the tire for them. And this charismatic individual said, do you have any money? And my pastor's son never carried money on him because if he did, he'd give it away. And he said, no, I don't have any money on me. Some kind of minister you are. Some kind of Christian you are. He just got done changing his tire for him. Amen. Praise the Lord, people. How dare you some of you that haven't even been listening to this ministry for if it's just a short time probably have evil thoughts about the goings-on of this ministry. Amen. 
Praise the Lord, people. It's true. Many times, God's people become judges of evil thoughts. But then think about those that have been listening for a long time, just waiting for Brother Joseph to slip up. (laughs) Just waiting. We're waiting him to say the wrong thing. Just waiting. Now, how do you know that, Brother Joseph? Because I read my Bible and I see what they did to Jesus. I saw the way they treated Jesus in the scripture. And I know it goes on today. Hello. Praise God. I've often said to you, why are you here? Why are you listening to this broadcast? Amen. Jesus said to those that were following him, he said, Lest you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life in you. The scripture says, he said to them, if my father did not draw you, if the spirit didn't draw you here, you cannot come. They were offended and they left him. He turned to his own 12 and said, will you also go away? Basically, Jesus was saying to his disciples, and I'm not talking about the 12, I'm talking about all those other disciples that were following. Basically, he said to them, this is what he was saying, why are you here? No doubt there were those that had evil thoughts, right? Think about how the disciples were treating those little children that came to sit on Jesus' lap. Think about the evil thoughts. Hello. Evil thoughts, people. Why would they have evil thoughts when little children are coming to sit on Jesus' lap? Most likely they were envious or jealous that they weren't that close to him. But look how close John got. Amen. Put his head on Jesus' breast. You're only as close to Christ as you want to be. I'm tiring of those that are envious and jealous of those that have greater relationships with God. Stop persecuting those that have close relationships to God and get one for yourself. Get close to God for yourself. I wonder how many of them had evil thoughts about John because John had a close relationship with Jesus. Hello. John said, the disciple whom Jesus loved. John knew that Jesus loved him. Do you? Oh, yeah, you sing the song, Jesus Loves Me. Listen to me. Paul the Apostle said, I'm persuaded that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you're not secure in the love of God, you're going to have evil thoughts. You're going to entertain those evil thoughts. You're going to give place to those evil thoughts. You're going to be impartial or you're going to be partial in your thoughts and you're going to be partial. Amen. You're not going to be just. You're not going to be sincere. You're not going to be honest. But if you'll become secure, settled, grounded in the love of God, in Christ Jesus. If you will get grounded in Christ, the scripture says you'll be filled with all the fullness of God. Be filled with the love of Christ. Praise the Lord. 
Remember, God reigns on the just and the unjust alike. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is merciful toward all that call upon his name. You're only as close to God as you want to be. Don't envy those. Don't be jealous of. Don't be eyeing. Don't have an evil eye with those that are closer to God than you. How many know the Pharisees had an evil eye towards the disciples? Oh, yeah. That evil eye goes on and on and on, all down through history. Amen. Dear God, people. That's how people are filled with darkness. With that glance of the eye, that side eye, that always looking, never straightforward, always looking around, always wondering what everybody else has. Stop it. Stop it. Let God help you. Let God deliver you. Let let me tell you, you'll never have rest as long as you've got an evil eye. Amen. You'll never have rest. You'll never have peace. You will never be able to rest as long as you're looking around. Amen. As long as you're looking around, you'll never be able to rest. You'll never have peace. That evil eye will cause you to keep on working like the hamster on the hamster wheel. Around and around and around in circles. Israel kept murmuring, complaining at God. After God been so good to them. Can he even feed us out here in this wilderness? Murmuring, complaining. That evil eye. Amen. They weren't content. Every time God did something for them, they weren't thankful. They forgot, forgot what God had done for them. They quickly, they soon forgot, the Bible says, after he had just parted the Red Sea, after they just rejoiced, it wasn't long before they were murmuring again. Are you listening? I'm going to say it again. As long as you have an evil eye, you can never rest. Never. You will never have peace. So if you don't want peace, if you don't want to rest in your soul, just keep on in the evil eye. Keep on saying you don't have a problem. Keep on saying you're not wrong. Amen? But if you'll confess your sins, if you'll confess the truth, He is faithful and just to forgive us. And not only forgive us, but cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Say I these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Are you enjoying the corn? Are you? You enjoying the corn of this ministry? Are you enjoying being fed? Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Does God take care for the oxen? Or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written. Listen. That he that ploweth should plow in hope and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing 
If we shall reap your carnal things. Let that sink down into your ears, brothers and sisters. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? I ask you again, as I'm closing, are you enjoying the corn? Day after day, praise God, we have labored. We have uploaded thousands and thousands of videos. Even on the days when Brother Joseph doesn't share something, there is thousands of videos over the years that you can go listen to. God's word never changes. Amen. Someone that recently just sent in a very generous donation said, I've devoured everything you got. I went on the YouTube, and I heard one of your messages. He said, I started devouring every message. Praise God. He's still faithfully supporting this ministry all these years. Praise God. But he couldn't get enough. And so he kept on devouring and eating and eating. But he did not muzzle the ox. Are you listening? Thank God. Thank God for those in this hour that are not judges of evil thoughts. Praise God. Feel the Spirit of the Lord. Praise God. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. What right do you have, Brother Joseph, to say these things? That's what they said to Jesus. What right do you have to do these things? What right? Where did you get that authority? What did Jesus say? If you answer this question, I'll also answer your question. He had been telling them all along his authority came from above. They just weren't listening. Amen. I didn't choose this calling brothers and sisters it wasn't my choice i didn't wake up one day and say i want to be in the ministry amen i was called into the ministry I was prepared by god and sent and there's a lot of fakes out there and frauds today Amen, but don't be a judge of evil thoughts and think that Brother Joseph's one of them. Amen. Amen, people. Somebody is trying to muzzle this ox. Dear God, Whew. praise your name. Praise your name, Lord. With or without you, we will continue to serve the Lord. We'll continue to obey God. Amen? We will. Even if it takes the widow's might, praise the Lord. Whatever. Whatever God wants, people. But you, if you're trying to muzzle this ox, and I just don't, I don't know. I don't know how well an ox does that's being muzzled. Amen. Now, is it wrong to put a muzzle on an ox? What does the scripture say? What does it say? Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn.
Did you know that was a law? Did you know that was God's law? But they do today. They do muzzle the ox. Amen. That bridle they put in the mouth of a horse. Get over here. You're not eating any grass. I used to I used to ride horses, I know. They want to stick their head down and eat. But you got the reins and you pull their head back. Amen. Or you're near water. Let that horse put his head down and drink. And you know what? The ride will be better. Let that oxen eat. And you know what? It won't work against you. Amen. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Let's work together, people. Amen. Let's work together. That God in all things will be glorified. Amen. God bless you. Got the power.